It's party time in Vanuatu. <laughs> the Melanesian Arts and Music Festival is coming to an end. But behind the celebrations, it's been a trying month for this country, and particularly for its leader, Prime Minister <laughs> Edward Natape. <laughs> Natape is facing a virtual police rebellion. Three weeks before, the police arrested his Attorney General and 14 other officials over what they saw as a conspiracy of foreigners to control government appointments and policies here. Um, you're welcome, you hold your the courts released all 15, but now it's rumoured that the police are planning more arrests, including Natape himself, when the music festival finishes in a few days' time. To make matters worse, an indigenous nationalist movement is growing in influence by the day. A movement which portrays Natape as being under the spell of tax haven investors and Australian intelligence. They're the executive of the national right-wing movement, or freedom fighters. They're more left-wing than right, but they like the panache of their chosen name. Many of them are veterans of the 1970s independence struggle, and they believe their hour is coming again to fight new foreign forces, Australia in particular. We must ask him Australia and we must carry back on federal police plan with the Mullah Vice's plan and we must go back. Yes. yes. To these men, Vanuatu is under threat by an invasion of Australian intelligence. Defence Force personnel stationed here as advisers to the Vanuatu Army and Australian Federal Police supposedly liaising on international criminal matters. <coughs> They suspect that the real task of the Australians is to undermine the sovereignty of the Vanuatu government and the independence of its police force. Especially Australia, from by him asking the embassy in Australia, said, please, we will ask you, are you carrying back on the police advice for you? With your AFP for you? With your advice for you? It's very important that they have the right information before they can uh, make any move. I feel that uh, most of uh, the moves that they've taken up until now have been based on rumours and uh, information that uh, were not uh, uh, entirely uh, correct. It's tempting to dismiss the opinions of this group as an expression of nationalist paranoia. But in just a few weeks, through the events documented in this film, their views will move from the fringe of politics to the very centre. In this recent interview, Foreign Minister and Deputy PM Serge Vahor makes an astounding claim. His views apparently transformed through recent dramas in his country. I mean, our government have to make a decision to safeguard our sovereignty and to safeguard our political stability and to safeguard our economics. And we need to take some actions. Uh, it's, not help, it's not helping uh, our government to have this uh, Australian federal police spies in our country. Spies? Well, the reason they say they're there is for, as you say, uh, to monitor international drug traffic or, or money laundering, have they gone beyond what that agreement is? Have they stepped beyond their, their policing role? Oh yeah, miles. They went on miles away from the real issue. One businessman in Australia... It's late August and Jeff Joel, the group's spokesman, reiterates an earlier public demand that the AFP leave Vanuatu, a deadline which will end when the music festival finishes.
Pam bai mi megam small talk talk long afternoon. If today's ceremony is anything to go by, Edward Natape is no Australian lackey. Banwatu pam bai emi ready. Lo take map course belong you me all people belong West Papua back again. It's a reconciliation with the West Papuans, a kind of apology for ignoring or obstructing their cause in the past. Both Natape and his deputy and foreign minister, Serge Fahor, would know that announcing support for the separatists in West Papua will hardly win them any friends in Canberra. Nevertheless, this government has had a good relationship with Australia and there's been no signs of any outward tension to date. Serge Vahor is given the honour of formalising today's proceedings. There'll be a lot more bad blood to be washed away before the week is out. Tuesday morning and the army has taken over the main street of Port Vila. Fully armed and in battle gear, the Vanuatu Mobile Force, the VMF, have surrounded the police station and are trying to arrest 27 senior police officers. There's a stunned silence on the street as civilians start pouring in around the army. So what's going on? Uh, it involves many issues but the Basic one is that uh, of the police commissioner. Sorry? Can you just take out your camera for me? Where, where can I go? You're not allowed to take the camera. It's not your problem. No, well, I'll just go wherever you like to go. But I, you, know. you just fuck off from here. I think it's not a peace work. But these guys wouldn't act uh, on their own. I mean, they'd no, be... no, no, no. No one of the commander would act outside the law. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. Jeff Joel has heard that Australian defence advisers had been seen with the VMF the previous day as they were preparing themselves for this attack. He tries to gather information about who was behind this assault. The police have weapons of their own and are refusing to come out. There's little doubt that a single spark on this crowded street would create a bloodbath. You could have ended up with a, a gun battle on the, on the streets of Port Vila. Why was it necessary to uh, arrest the police leadership? Well, I think uh, it's, it's important that uh, at the end of the day, um, uh, government is seen to be on top of, and in control of, of things and that the force is uh, totally um, loyal to the government of the day. As the crowd grows and the police dig in, the army retreats. You may be disappointed, but I'm saying all muskets only come come out the road. No public, no people are brought to life. Eric Pakoa, the police commander of this region. Pakoa was one of those who led the arrests against the Attorney General and others, an act for which he's totally unrepentant. But for the Prime Minister, the service that Pakoa is providing is dangerously on the verge of subverting a democratically elected government. There was uh, information going around that there were going to be a further 35 members uh, to be arrested uh, from either leaders of, uh, of the government or uh, civil society. So it was